Hi everybody, thank you for coming back to the Wildodin Studio channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to show you how to connect your Raspberry Pi to the platform. For this you will need the Raspberry Pi, an SD card adapter for your computer, an SD card which is at least 4 GB in size and optionally a network cable. Okay, so let's get started with connecting the Raspberry Pi. The first steps of connecting the Raspberry Pi to the platform are the same regardless whether you use the offline version or the browser version. So first of all, let's go to documentation and here we will go to board setup. As you can see, you have several boards that you can set up. We will select the Raspberry Pi. Now, Wildodin Studio uses the standard Raspberry Pi image, meaning the Raspbian operating system. The only difference between the standard Raspbian operating system and the image that we use is that we have to add some small piece of software to the Raspbian image so that it can connect to Wildodin Studio and you will be able to deploy projects. Um, for this, you have two options. You can either download the pre-configured image of the Raspberry Pi from our website, and please be aware that the image is different whether you're using a Raspberry Pi Zero or if you're using a Raspberry Pi 2, 3, or 4. Of course, if you do not like to download our image, you can always go to um, set up the board manually, and this will present you the steps from downloading the standard Raspbian image and adding everything that is needed to be able to connect to our platform. Okay, in our case, we will download um, the pre-configured image. I have a Raspberry Pi version 4, so I will click Raspberry Pi version 4. As you can see, it starts downloading the image. So now that we have downloaded the SD card image, we need some special software to flash it onto the SD card. For this, we will search on Google Etcher. Etcher is one of the best programs that can perform this task. Uh, it is really easy to download, so just click download and it will download Etcher for your operating system. In the meanwhile, we will use our SD card reader and place the SD card into the reader and connect it to the USB port of the computer. And here we go. Now that Etcher has downloaded, let's, um, let's extract it. Etcher comes in the form of a zip file. So first, before using it, we need to extract it. I will say extract, and I will extract it into downloads. Show files, and we will just double click Etcher, and it should start. Here we go. Okay, so Etcher has a really simple user interface. We need to select the file that we want to flash, and we will select um, the file that we have just downloaded with the Raspberry Pi image. The name of the file will be something with wildodrine underscore studio underscore Raspberry Pi and the date. So we're gonna double click this file, select the target. This is our SD card and as you can see our SD card shows up. I have used an 8 gigabytes SD card and I will just click select. When everything is configured I'll just hit flash. Um, and if you're using Linux or Windows, you will be prompted for your password. And let me just uh, enter my password. And if everything is right, it will start flashing. Well, flashing takes about uh, 5 to 10 minutes. So um, we'll just wait. While the SD card is getting flashed, I will take the time and detail a little bit how the Raspberry Pi connects to Wildodin Studio. There are two ways to connect. One is using your local network, and that implies that you are using the offline version, and the other one through the internet, and that implies that you are using the web version or the offline version. Now, let's get into details, and for this, I will share my screen again. As you can see here, this is the local version of the connection. I have a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi will be connected to my local router. The local router is the piece of hardware that I have received from my internet service provider. And this is my computer, and this computer will be again connected to my local router. These connections over here can either be a network cable, either a Wi-Fi connection, it does not matter. In order to use this type of a connection, the only thing that you need to do is to flash the SD card image and you're done. Now the second way is the remote way or the internet way. In this case, the Raspberry Pi can be located anywhere in the world, and the Raspberry Pi has to be able to access the internet, and it will connect to the Wildodrine server. My computer 
will use either the offline version, either the, the web version, and it again has to be connected through the internet. The Wiledin server, cloud, will make the connection between the Raspberry Pi and my computer. Connecting the Raspberry Pi through the internet to Wiledin Studio requires an extra configuration step after flashing the SD card, but we will talk about this in a minute. Okay, so let's, now let's take a look if the SD card has been flashed. As you can see, Etcher is validating the SD card. That means that it's reading back the information from the SD card and checks if it's the same with the information in the SD card image. This step is not really necessary, but it's, it is recommended as a broken SD card might uh, not function. So we'll still have to wait about a minute so that Etcher can finish validating and we can start, uh, we can continue setting up the board. Etcher has just finished um, writing up and verifying the SD card, so we are good to go. Uh, next, we'll close Etcher, and if we go to see our files and folders, we should see a drive with the name boot, and we should be able to see these files on the SD card. Now, here comes the tricky part. If you are using the offline version of Wildodin Studio, and you have a network cable, this is everything that you need to do. But if you want to use the internet version of the connection, or if you want to do use wireless, there's one extra step that we have to perform. So we will close the Etcher page and go to board setup, and we will go to set up wireless. Now setting up wireless is a standard process, and it is completely described on the Raspberry Pi's foundation website. Um, and this tells us the following. We need to write a file which is called vpasupplicant.conf to this boot partition. For this, I will start uh, a text editor and I will open the folder with this boot partition. Uh, here we go. Okay, I'll just make a new file and name it VPA supplicant supplicant.conf. Okay, just copy and paste the information from the website to this file. After copying and pasting, I have to complete two uh, or three uh, details. One is the country where I want to use the Raspberry Pi. In my case, it's Romania. And the second one is the SSID and the password of the wireless network. My network is called Bing Bang, and I will insert my password here. Of course, uh, you will see a blurred text. Please um, replace the password with anything that is uh, conformant to your wire wireless network. Okay, the only thing is to save the file, and we can close the editor, and the last step is to eject the SD card. Okay, now we have the SD card. Um, we just have to place it in, into the Raspberry Pi, and we will connect the Raspberry Pi to the power source. Next, we will start Wilder in Studio, and um, it should take a few minutes for the Raspberry Pi to appear. Now, the Raspberry Pi will not appear instantly because it runs Linux, and Linux needs some time to boot the operating system. So, do expect a few uh, minutes before the Raspberry Pi will appear. Okay, so after a few minutes of waiting, the, our Raspberry Pi has just appeared in the, the Connect menu. We can click on it, and it will ask us for a password. Now, the default uh, credentials for the Raspberry Pi are Pi and Raspberry, so the username is already placed there. I will write Raspberry and hit Enter. Of course, I was able to log into the Raspberry Pi, but I also get a warning telling me that, hey, it would be a good idea to change the password. Um, as you can see, I have connected to the Raspberry Pi. The first thing that I need to do is to rename it so that I can identify it as my Pi. And I will say Alex's Pi. I will hit OK, and you can see the name has changed. Also, um, while in Studio had told me that it would be a good idea to change the password, so I will do password, P-A-S-S-W-D. Uh, I will write the current password of the Raspberry Pi, and I will introduce a new password. This step is not required, but strongly advised, as all the Raspberry Pis have the same default password at the beginning. Now that we have connected the Raspberry Pi in the offline version, let's see how we can connect it on, in the online version. For this, I will disconnect from the Pi, close Wilder in Studio, 
and go back to the browser. And I will start the web version. Now in the web version, as you can see, your Raspberry Pi does not show up because the web version is not able to access your local network. So for this, I will go to add new device. I will say that I want to add a Raspberry Pi and I will give it a name, probably Alex's Pi again. And now while in studio is presenting me with a file here that I need to place on that boot partition. For more information, you can click the more info button and it will explain everything about this file. So for now, I will disconnect the file from the power source, take the SD card, place it back in the, to the SD card reader, hopefully this works, and place the SD card reader again into my USB connection. As you can see in the files and folder, we again have this boot partition. All that I need to do is click download, and uh, the browser will download the file which is called wildloading.json. As I already have an existing file, I will delete that one, rename this file to actually wildloading.json, and copy it into the boot partition. As we can see, this file is present here. Now I will disconnect the SD card, extract the SD card from my computer, and place it back into the Raspberry Pi. Now all that I have to do is to connect the Raspberry Pi to the power source again, and just wait for a few seconds for the Raspberry Pi to connect. Now that I have this wildloading.json file on the SD card, the Raspberry Pi is accessible from the offline version in the way that we have seen before, and from the online version uh, through the wildloading server. As you can see, the Raspberry Pi has just shown up. It's called Alexis Pi, and if I can connect to it, I can access the shell and everything. As you can see, I was never asked for a password. For the web connection, when you connect the Raspberry Pi over the internet through our server, you will not be asked for a password because the Raspberry Pi is authenticated based on the small Wildodin file that we have placed on the SD card. This concludes our small tutorial on how to connect the Raspberry Pi to Wildodin Studio. Please remember there are two ways to connect the Raspberry Pi. One is through the local network, but that implies that you are using the offline version of Wildodin Studio and the Raspberry Pi is connected physically into the same network as your computer. The second one is through the internet, through our Wildodin server. This implies that the Raspberry Pi has an additional file called wildodin.json on the SD card that is able to link the Raspberry Pi to our server and from our server, you can be linked in the browser to your Raspberry Pi. Thank you so much for watching. I will be uh, waiting for questions in the comments. And if you want to see our new videos, please don't forget to subscribe.